In this video about functions in Ecotech part 2, I want to take a look at some of the simulation functionality, how we can apply it, and create an overview of what you can do with the program. I have now opened the Ecotech environment, and I want to take off where I left last time with this very simple zone, and I want to show some different functionalities that we can apply with inside Ecotech analysis. So, if we go to the zone management here, I want to mark this zone as a thermal zone. I want to make sure that this wall and this window is really understanding each other and right now they really don't because you can see that the surface area and the exposed area are the same which won't be the case here because the area of the wall and the exposed area are not the same so one thing important thing before doing any kind of simulation in here please mark out the zones click here to fix links and mark these two below so your base plane equation and automatically fix links this is a very important factor to do so let's click the wall and see that now it's really updated that the surface area and the exposed area here one other important factor if you want to do different types of simulations is to calculate the interzonal adjacency which is kind of how the relation between the different elements are within inside the model. Many of the simulations, the thermal analysis and other simulations will require you to run this simulation and you can reuse the settings here if you're not changing any geometry because this simulation can take some time. So let's go into that. This is really how many traces it will spray out to test the geometry. We, this is the recommended area. I just want to set this to very low because I have some very simple geometry. Click next and say, okay, how far apart can these surfaces be if I have a neighboring building before it kind of figures out that it's two buildings or one building. So right now, if I put it down here, if there's less than 375 millimeters between, it will know that it's two walls uh, opposite each other. And if it's more than that, it will consider the buildings to be apart. Okay, click next. If you want to check all the surface that you have the directional arrow pointed from the inside to the outside, you can make sure that the program is checking that yourself, but it will take some time. I want to say no use existing and how detailed your shading calculation will be for your over overshadowing calculation. I'm just doing it very fast here and then I just say okay. And now it ca it's calculating uh, the geometry. So if I hit the wall here again, like that, you'll see that the exposed area and the surface area are now the same, but it's just extracted the window area from the wall, which is correct. So please make sure that these things are set up before doing any kind of simulation. You can really apply a multiple range of simulation here. You can go into your shading design wizard, where you can make cutting planes, you can create extrude object for solar envelopment and generate optimal shading devices uh, and then when you have created a shading device then look at the most exposed area in this device and you can do really right to light analysis lighting analysis you can click an individual element to look at the exact solar exposure for that specific element and you can scroll throughout the year to see how much incident absorbed transmitted direct diffuse and reflected light and heat will hit the specific surface and you can look for that for a single day average daily stuff like that so you can calculate on your geometry on your surfaces and you can really calculate the zone volume and and um, surfaces in the thermal analysis. So let's look at the thermal analysis. Here we can click this guide and we can start looking at losses and gains, looking at the passive gains breakdown to get a sense of how the distribution between losses and gains are with the, in relation to the passive passive um, gains and from, from conduction and direct solar and stuff like that. And then we can go from there, going to the monthly load discomfort, which won't display anything before we went into the zone settings here and just activated some kind of system. I just want to click full air conditioned and then based on the thermostat range it will create some energy measurements here that we can start evaluating different types of material combinations etc. If we go back to the 3D editor we can also calculate on a grid so we can say display analysis grid and we can go out of fit this grid with inside the, the floor area here and we can choose a boundary insert 
let's say 400 and a specific cell size, let's say 500 as well, and just click OK. So now we made a grid that we can use for calculating lightning analysis, going into natural light levels, and just get a sense of the distribution inside the zone like that. So at this stage here, where you're working with some very conceptual rooms, it's quite effective to use the grid here to set it up and do some quick studies of the distribution with inside the space here. And then, of course, we can apply a lot of other different types of analysis, but this was just a quick insight on what you can do and things to be aware of with inside Ecotech.